All right. Everything we've talked about so far is about efficiency. We haven't talked about this equity thing. The problem with this equity thing is it's tied up in this concept of fairness. Efficiency I can do math with. I can prove that the math says that we're better off or we're worse off. or we're not. I can draw that little triangle and say, look, worse off. Equity, I can't draw some little triangle and say, look, this is the unfairness triangle. Unfairness is a squishy, timey-wimey concept that we can't necessarily even agree on. We have referees in sporting events to make sure the game is fair, right? I don't know if you ever refereed. I've been a referee for a long time. How people judge fairness from the referee is different. There are people who think that the referee should blow their whistle all game long. Except for the last minute or two of the game, they should stop. There are other people who think that the referee should blow their whistle the same all game long. Some of those people think that the referee should blow a lot of whistles all game long. And there's other people that think the referee's job is to blow a minimum number of whistles, the minimum possible number of whistles. Okay? There are people who think that fair means you blow your whistle when other people's kids do something wrong, but not when their kid does something wrong. I have a very good friend whose daughter was playing basketball, and I called her fifth foul and fouled her out of a game. I only called one foul. Other referees called four. I only called one. And her mom admits that the daughter made a really bad foul. And I, But mom is still mad at me that I fouled her daughter out of the game. And years later, she was still harassing me that I fouled her daughter out of the game. Okay? Different people have a different ideas of what constitutes fairness. Okay? So some people work on this idea that what matters in fairness is the result. And no matter how bad we screw things up to get to the end of the game, if the better team wins, if the team that plays better, if the boxer that landed the most punches, if whatever, the result is right, it doesn't matter what we did to get there. So people, some people have this philosophical thing that, the result is what matters. That's how we should judge whether something is fair. Did we get the right result? Okay. Well, that doesn't answer really any of our questions. So that there's these old guys, John Stuart Mill, Jeremy Bentham, both long dead. Um, if you don't know Jeremy Bentham's story or John Stuart Mill's story for that much, uh, learning about them would both entertain you and excite you. Anyway, they believed in a philosophy called utilitarianism. Their theory is that the fair thing to do is do the thing that creates the maximum good for the maximum number of people. So if there's a rich guy, one rich guy in a town and a whole bunch of poor people, the right thing to do is to take away a lot of what that rich guy has and spread it out among the poor people. Because that's the maximum good for the maximum number of people. Got that? So the utilitarian philosophy is tax the rich, give to the poor, kind of the Robin Hood thing. Okay? That that's the optimal way to run your society. That your society needs to have a great deal of equality, of equity. That we don't want trillionaires and people living on 50 cents a day we want everybody you know not exactly equal but everybody with a reasonable life right and that would make people better off the progressive movement in the united states starts about the time well after those guys time but kind of you know following in line with those guys one of the kind of founders of the progressive movement in the United States as an economist is this guy named Henry George. And he said, what destroyed every previous civilization is the tendency to unequal. So what he's saying is what the progressive movement says is society is becoming unfair. 
in the late 1800s, you have the robber baron era, you have all this stuff going on where the poor are getting poorer and the rich are getting richer and society is pulling apart. And that's not fair, right? The modern descendant of the progressive movement is Bernie Sanders or Alexandria Ocasio-Clemente. Those folks believe in a lot of taxes on rich people, helping out poor people, providing free education, f free health care. And of course, again, you know what I think about the word free, what economists think about the word free. But without going into the, the details here, you know, the education system in America is broken. The health care system in America is broken. We have to, well, we don't have to fix them, but we would make lots of people better off if we fix them. The rich people in America are getting richer. What constitutes fair? And how do we prove that whatever it is that we're going to do is fair? Okay. The opposing view on this comes from uh, the 80s, really, the 1980s. We have Ronald Reagan, who was president for most of the 80s. We have Gordon Gecko, Michael Douglas, but Gordon Gecko from the movie Wall Street, who gives a famous speech about greed is good. The opposing view is that incentives matter. And that if you tell people, you can get rich all you want, but every time you get rich, we're going to take it all away from you. Then you destroy the incentive to get rich. And it doesn't mean the poor people are going to be better off. It means everybody's going to end up poor. Okay? On top of this, they argue that taking income from one group of people to another group of people costs money. So you can never take a million dollars away from one person and give a million dollars to other people. You're always going to take a million dollars away from one person and give less money to other people. And they argue that fair does not by definition mean equal. If I'm bigger, stronger, faster, smarter, harder working than the other guy, why shouldn't I get paid more? Isn't fair the fact that I'm bigger, stronger, faster, and work harder and smarter I should get paid more. I should be worth more. LeBron James should get paid more than the dude who sits on the end of the bench and can't get in the game. Okay? So what really is fair? It's this problem. The other view of this isn't that the result of the game is what matters. It's the rules that matter. So the other view of fairness is that we have to look at the rules. And even then, we don't agree. Just like in the basketball game. Basketball games have rules. There are some referees who pride themselves on not blowing their whistle. There are other referees who pride themselves on catching every little thing that happens. How we interpret those rules and how we live inside those rules is different, and different people have different views of what's fair in interpreting the rules. But there's these two basic philosophies of how the rules should be. One comes from this guy, Robert Nozick. He's quoted in your book. You can There's a little bit about him in your book. He is a libertarian, or was a libertarian. He's dead now. Both these guys are dead. Libertarians, their famous saying is that Liberals think that government is your mom and should tuck you in at night and cook you dinner. Conservatives think that government is your dad who tells you you can't have the car and you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do that. Libertarians think that people are adults and they should be able to choose and do whatever they want to on their own. So the Nozick philosophy is that society should figure out how to have as few rules as possible. We should minimize the number of rules. Okay? The opposite of that is this guy named John Rawls. And John Rawls has a different philosophy. His philosophy says, we don't all start out at the same place. Some people's daddies leave them a half a billion dollars, or don't leave them, but give them a half a billion dollars. Transfer a half a billion dollars to them. Give them a whole bunch of New York real estate. Transfer a half a billion dollars to them. Other people, their dad didn't give them nothing. Well, if you're born in New York to a rich father, rich family, 
and daddy gives you a half a billion dollars, it's pretty easy to be rich. If you're born in the inner city in Detroit and your parents barely have enough money to feed you and clothe you and your schools are terrible and you're much less likely to end up rich. Okay? So the John Rawls theory is that the rules should try somehow to make an equal chance of people succeeding regardless of where they start. All right? So, Nozick. And these guys actually were in the same philosophy department at the same university for a long time. So, it's one of them intellectual discussions. Nozick says that fair is that people in the same situation should get treated similarly. So, you have two rich people in New York. They should both be treated the same. You have two poor people in Detroit they should both be treated the same. But you shouldn't necessarily treat the rich person in New York the same as you treat the poor person in Detroit. Okay? He calls it the symmetry principle. He says, from each as they choose, so everybody gets free choice, to each as they are chosen. So this is the opposite of Karl Marx, right? So Karl Marx said, you know, from each as they choose, Nozick is going to each as they are chosen. So those people who are chosen better get more than the people who are Okay? Minimum number of rules is the optimal way to have a society. Right? So there are, there are other authors out there who say the same thing, who, in fact, if we go back hundreds of years, we know that there are churches that used to teach that rich people have been blessed by God and poor people have not. And you shouldn't feel sorry for the poor people because God has made them poor. God chose that they were going to be poor and somebody else was going to be rich. Okay? So you may have a philosophy, and there are people who do, who say, look, the reason that poor people are poor is because they're not as good at whatever functioning in society and the people who function better in society they're going to end up rich and you shouldn't feel sorry for the poor because they just don't have the skills or ability or talent or whatever to function as well in society as the people who end up rich all right so now Rawls is going to be the opposite of that Rawls comes up with this idea of this veil of ignorance he says imagine a world that you're about to be born you don't know where in the world you're going to be born. You could be born anywhere on the planet Earth. Black, white, male, female, rich, poor, any of those conditions, you could be born anywhere on the planet Earth. Are you happy with that? What should the rules be? What world are you willing to be born into? Okay. Okay. The result of your life is not independent of where you start it. And Rawls basically says, fair means we set up a system so it doesn't matter where you start. If you start in a bad spot, you get more help. And if you start in a good spot, you get less help. And we create a system where no matter where you start, we don't guarantee that you're going to end up rich we don't guarantee that you're going to end up poor. We don't guarantee where you're going to end up. But we build a system where everybody has a path. Okay? Veil of ignorance. Okay? So two very different views. The point of this is, A, we don't all know what fairness is, and B, we have two, even if we're talking about what matters are the rules, we have two different ideas, two very different ideas of what the rules should be. Because one group says, few rules as possible, that's the best for everybody. The other one says, we need rules that create these equal, equivalent opportunities for people. We need to create opportunity for people. Okay? So, there is no answer to that question. When you think about these problems, think about 
roads and congestion and messed up roads. Okay? So the roads, what happens on those freeways is a combination of markets and command and majority rule and contest and first come f there's how resources get allocated on that freeway when do you have to be on them which do you live in a state where they build lots of big freeways do you live in a state where the freeways are a little how would you fix the traffic congestion problem and what's fair if i choose to live far away from work and my coworker chooses to live right near work, and so my coworker walks to work, and I have to drive for an hour. Should my coworker who walks to work have to pay for the roads for me to get to work quicker? Is that fair? Hmm. If I put tax, and we have a tax on gasoline, most roads in the United States are paid with a tax on gasoline. Well, so I can buy an electric car. Now I don't pay the gasoline tax, but I still get to drive on the road. Hmm. Most states, and Nevada is in the process of doing this, Nevada is going to start changing your car registration fee. So the more miles you drive every year, the more your registration fee is. So now the electric car owners are going to get taxed on the miles they drive so that their money goes into this pool to fix the road. Okay? Some places in America, there's lots and lots and lots of toll roads. So if you go to the East Coast, a lot of the freeways you have to pay to get on the freeway. Okay? We don't generally do that out West, except if you go down to Orange County in California. If you go down to Orange County in California, there are actually private freeways. There are connectors between point A and point B on a freeway that were built by private companies. And you can get on that freeway, but it costs you money. The more congested that separate freeway is, the more you pay. So at 2 o'clock in the morning when nobody is out on that freeway, it might cost you 20 cents to get on that little branch and go. During rush hour, it might cost you 5 or $6 to get on that road. The point is they keep they use the price to keep the number of people on that road low enough that the traffic never slows down so if you're on the public road all those people slow the traffic down if you're on the private road the price is adjusted to keep the traffic flowing so again these things are really complex how do we get efficiency how do we allocate resources and what is fair when we do that Let's go talk about something else.